Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to make a background timer with the React Native Background Timer package. And you can see here, this is the app we're going to be making, very simple little countdown time with a stop, stop, uh, stop and start button here. And if we press that, we can see that the timer starts counting down. And this runs in the background, so we can see we're on 55 seconds here. We put this in the background, wait a few seconds, two, three and it should now be on 40 something seconds go back on the app and there we go so it continued in, in the background and that wouldn't be the case if we weren't using the background timer uh, package so with that being said let's get stuck in okay then guys so I've just run mpx react native init and then I've called the project background timer and that gives us the starter files here and this is the app.js file our main file and I've also installed the react native background timer and as you can, and to do that, you just run um, npm, npm install React Native Background Timer save. So that's just here on the React Native Background Timer GitHub page. Okay, so this one. And then I have imported React, the use effect hook, and the use state hook from React. I've imported style sheet, view, text, and button from React Native. And I've also imported the background timer from React Native Background Timer. And then we have our main app components, which is just a standard functional component, which is returning a view with a text that just says hello in the middle. And as we can see uh, here, we have a little hello in the top left hand side. And I'll just make this a little bit bigger so it's easy for you to see. And we have our styles down here, so that is just equal to stylesheet.create and we're just exporting the app down here. Okay, and we've just got an empty uh, object in here where we're going to put the styles uh, soon. So first of all I'm just going to do some very quick simple styling and I'm going to call this uh, container and give this a style as well. I'm going to call this time because this is where we're going to output our uh, time here. So how much time we've got left. So let's just do that quickly. So we've got a container and I'm just going to give that a background color of black. And I'm going to justify the content to the center. I'm going to align items to center so everything's uh, vertically and horizontally central and if we save that let's see it didn't work and that's because we've spelled container wrong here okay so as you can see that gives us the uh, What's going on here? Okay, so that's given us this little uh, black rectangle at the top. So then we just need to say flex uh, one so that it takes up the whole available space. And then let's just do our uh, time text styles. And we're going to give this a color of white. Uh, we'll text align it to the center. And we'll give it a font size of 30, so it's nice and big. And there we go. So that's in the middle. Uh, so now what we're going to do is just have a little button that uh, we can press to stop and start the uh, timer. So we're going to have a start slash stop button, okay, which is right there. And now what do we want to do? Let's have our uh, state uh, variables now, define those. So we're going to have a seconds left variable and set seconds left. And that is going to be equal to use state. And we're going to initialize that to 3601 seconds and that is equal to one hour and one second. 
and then we're going to have a timer on variable along with a set timer on and that is going to be a boolean value and that's going to tell us whether the timer is on or off initially it's going to be off so we put the equal to false and then I'm going to define a uh, so a use effect hook okay and this code inside this hook is going to run whenever the timer on value changes so whenever the timer is switched on or off the code in here is going to run and in here we're just going to check to see if the timer is on if it is we're going to run a function called start timer okay and we're going to define that function in a second otherwise what we want to do is we want to get the background timer to stop running and as you can see here we've got the code for cross-platform so Android and iOS this code runs on so that's ideal and we just want to stop the background timer and we can use this here okay and then from this use effect hook we want to return a, uh, a function so this is like component will unmount and again whenever the uh, the app un unmounts we want to stop the background timer so it doesn't stop running when the app isn't actually on the screen so that is looking okay there so now I think what I will do is um, I will define this a function called clockify um, okay and this is where we're gonna have we're gonna convert the seconds left into hours minutes and seconds okay so first of all hours and we're gonna use math.floor okay and we're gonna get the seconds left and we're going to divide it by 60 to get it into minutes and by 60 again to get it into seconds and that's going to floor it down so if it's like 2.5 hours it'll just say well we only want to display 2 hours and then that 0.5 hours we want to convert into minutes okay so that's why we use math.floor so mins equals math.floor and we're going to again get the seconds left divide it by 60 to get it into minutes but we only want the minutes that are left over once we've calculated the hours so we use this modulus operator to uh, find the uh, leftover minutes from when we calculated the hours okay so hopefully that makes some sense it is a little bit of a mind bender at first I think but just think it through you'll get there and then we're going to use math.floor again here for the seconds and we're going to use seconds left and we're going to use the modulus operator and 60 and that is simply going to get us the seconds uh, that are left over once we've calculated the minutes so again if it's 2.5 minutes we, we, we don't want 2.5 minutes showing on the screen we just want 2 minutes and then convert that 0.5 minutes into seconds and 0.5 minutes is 30 seconds so it will show 2 minutes and 30 seconds not 2.5 minutes okay so again hopefully that makes sense and I'm going to have now uh, some va uh, um, variables called display hours and we're going to have display minutes and seconds as well and all we're doing here is um, we always want it to be two numbers okay so two, um, two figures we don't want zero hours like this we want zero hours uh, zero minutes and uh, three seconds okay or 30 seconds it always needs to be two uh, digits so to do that we just check to see if the hours left is less than 10 and we're just going to use a ternary operator here if it is less than 10 then we need to append a zero on the front of hours otherwise we can just return the hours okay I'm going to copy that down twice and going to change this to display mins and we're going to check if the mins is less than 10 if it is we're going to append a zero on the front and uh, I just pressed highlighted it and press control D to select all three there okay so to select the next instance and then we're going to have display seconds here <coughs> so let's just change that to seconds and same thing again 
append a zero to the front if it is less than 10. So let's now um, display these this time in our text here. So we're going to have our curly braces because we're doing some JavaScript now. And we're going to call the clockify function. Okay. Now, what I forgot to do here is we need to return an object. And we're just going to return the display hours. Um, we're going to return, return display minutes and we're going to return the display seconds. Oops, there we go. And this is just the same as writing display mins and then display mins. Okay, if it's the same thing, the key and the value are the same, we can just do that. Okay, so just a shorter, simpler way of doing it. And I think the problem is here that we now need to say dot display hours here. So this is returning an object, so we can use the dot uh, JavaScript thing to get the um, to get the the value. And then I'm just going to put hours after this, and then I'm going to put some curly braces again, and I'm just going to copy this. In here, but this is going to be display mins. Okay, and then put mins again. Okay, good. And we are going to use this again here, but for the seconds. So let's see. There we go, one hour zero mins and one second okay so that is fine but now we need to um, add this start timer function so first of all what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a on press event listener on this button and that's going to have a callback and we're just going to set timer on and we're going to get the whatever the current uh, value is um, what's going on here so yeah whatever the current value is we're just going to make it the opposite okay so it takes a callback whatever the current value is we're just changing it so if it's currently false if we press this it will turn to true so now it's complaining that it can't find this start timer function. So let's now write that up here. And then here we're just going to use this run background timer function, okay, which comes with the uh, background timer. So just copy and paste that in. And we want it to run every one second, so a thousand milliseconds. And then the code in here that we want to run is we want to set the seconds left. And we're going to put a callback in here and we're going to get the current seconds, the current value. And we're just going to do a little check to see if the seconds is greater than zero. Then we want to return the seconds minus one. Otherwise, we just want to return zero because that means once we're down to zero we don't want to uh, minus any more seconds we want to stop and just return zero okay so that is that and we just need to define one more use effect hook because we need to make a we need to check whenever the seconds left hits zero what we need to do is stop the background timer. Okay, so when this returns zero, we need a use effect which detects that. So this is going to be listening out for seconds left. And we're going to have a check in here to see that if the seconds left is equal to zero, then we're going to do this background timer, stop background timer again.
Okay, so now I believe that should be it. So when we press fingers crossed, and there we go. So we press the timer. This timer on value becomes true. This use effect function is, is listening out for this uh, timer on whenever it changes. And it's checking to see if the timer is on, then we're starting the timer. The timer is now on. So we've run this start timer function, which runs the background timer every second. Checks if the seconds is greater than zero. It is. So we just return seconds minus one. And this clockify function is getting our seconds left and converting it into hours, minutes, and seconds, returning an object. And here we're displaying all this stuff to the screen. And now if we press this button again, it's going to get the current value, for whether the timer is on or off. Currently it is true, so it's going to change it to false. And then the timer will stop because this will run okay so we press this fingers crossed and it stop oh press that there we go I pressed it twice so yeah uh, press it again and it starts press it again and it stops so there we go there is a background timer and now let's just make sure that this thing actually does run in the background so I'm not sure what's happened to the buttons down here but let's see so if we start this timer so we're on 58 seconds 57 and let's just wait 2, 3, 4 so we should be on about 49 seconds let's guess and there we go so that is it folks hopefully that was helpful that is how to build a timer that runs in the background with react native thanks for watching guys if you like the video give me a like a subscribe it would help me out a lot and yeah i'll see you in the next one